What's up everyone, Cole Caparoon here. I've got a pre-production meeting with a band at a studio. So I'm gonna take you guys, show you the studio. Let's do that right now. Oh my goodness, look. It's Ravener. Hey. What's up? I can nice. see myself from here. I look great. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> you look better that far away than I do this close. Oops. We got a plan? We got a plan. We got a plan. We got a plan. Cool. Yeah. We're going to do a whole EP. It's going to be awesome. This is a cool studio. What's the name of the studio? Gnome Recording Studios. Gnome Recording Studios. Yes. There's no place like Gnome. There's no place. Oh, good That's lord. That's the slogan. That's no, there's adorable. no place like Gnome. There's no place like Gnome. I love it. So we got some cool gear. We got chips. Oh, what do they got? And you actually, I'm assuming all these pieces yeah. with the Gnome oh. on them, you built? I did. I yeah. built those. Yeah, 2A. Seriously. There's two at the very end. There's two, two, there, two Federal AM864s. Look at you. And then, what else? I built that little funky green looking thing. It's a two channel preamp. This thing right here? Yep. Look at that. Yeah. What's it based on? It's based on an old projector preamp. A projector preamp. Yeah. And basically the the actual unit's sitting in B. Oh, okay. Right now. Um, but it like it just sounded super sweet. It had so much gain. We're like, let's make a two channel version of it. So like, all right, sure. That's super cool. So, I love yeah. it. Uh huh. I love these Dat King channel strips. Those sound great on toms. Yeah, they do. I use them on toms yeah. a lot. I always say Dekang. 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 <laughs> Got some cool ATCs and a super old Soundcraft. Yeah, 1981. Wow. Oh. And I think it's got endless mods on it. Every Does channel's it? been reworked super cool do you want to give me a tour real quick let's do it let's do it so this is control room a right control room a control room a there's Chips. a lobby area in here got some drums up top oh. some rogers got some luddies all right um uh, sl oh, got some stairs cool old kits yeah nice and then our, our mic locker closet. lovely coffee the most important part <laughs> Coming into the tracking room here. Look at how cool this this these big pillars are in this super old building. We're like right downtown Nashville. Yeah, this building is early, I think it's 1920s, I want to say. I mean, seriously, how cool is that? Like literally original from the 20s. Look at that metal work. Yeah, it's insane. That's so crazy. Ugh. So live room. Got a live tracking room, room here. Yep. Cool. Back here we got another little ISO booth. This is like our very vibey room. Mm -hmm. It's got a upright in here. Excellent. Accent original brick wall. I love it. And I like look at this, like look at this wood beam. Like that looks like it was out of a ship from the 1700s. Oh yeah. It's not even straight. <laughs> it's, it's not just, even straight. I don't even know if it actually is supporting anything really. So cool. As the bricks are like falling off the wall. <laughs> Like, I think that was like a band-aid, honestly. That's so great. Back here, it's kind of got a little storage closet slash ISO. Cool. Cab area. You got a small bay. ISO cab. Bay. Oh, okay. Big bay. So you can drop combo amps in there. Yep. Pretty neat. I dig it. Then there's um there's Studio B, right? There is a Studio Let's B. Let's go to Studio B. Seriously. Brand new Look studio. It's probably been just open for about a month. A month. Another piano. Another piano. There's just stuff everywhere. Look, look at this cool building. That's awesome. So this is Studio B. Studio B. Very nice. So mix room, mastering room. Look at this Overdub diffuser. Room. Come on. Tell me you've seen something like that before, because I haven't. That's so cool. Some sweet ATCs. Got these pull techs. I actually built these pull techs as well. Are these kits? Um, they were not kits. Had to, you had to source the front panel and the chassis. Oh. Um, and then I had to like figure out how to wire it all up together. Well, so that's pretty cool. But it turned out great. I didn't realize I was in the presence of a genius. Actually, I did. Rob used to work at Third Power Amps and 
and so we knew each other from back then. From back then. From back in the day. Got a little and ISO booth in here. Cool. A little vocal booth or acoustic booth or whatever. Whatever you want to do in here. You can even Just set up like a little mini drum kit if you wanted to. <laughs> a little, uh. Little mini little. Little happy hour kit. Yeah, this is a cool room. Cool room for like overdubs. This is yeah. a great overdub room. So that's Studio B. It's pretty cool. This studio corner is actually another studio in this room here. Oh, is it really? Yeah, and then uh, obviously this place right there. That's cool. If you had to guess how many studios are in Nashville. Do you know the number? No, but uh, if you had to guess. Well, okay, what are you classified in the studio? Any location where serious music is made, even home studios. Like even like a solo artist producing demos by themselves? Sure. Ooh. Or private studios, like any serious studio. I mean, like. I didn't want to like say a number. Three thousand, five thousand. No, way more. I mean, eight, no, there's six hundred thousand people here. Eight hundred thousand. Is it eight hundred now? In oh Nashville Metro. Lord. So there's got to be like a you think mil one in two. Eight, one in eight's probably a musician. Easy. Okay, so Easy. let's say out of those eight, how many record by themselves? Three. Four? Half. I was gonna say half. Okay. Half of them record by themselves. So that's <laughs> how many people is that? So you said one in eight is a musician. So that's hundred thousand. Hundred thousand in metro, not including the other areas. Yeah, in metro. And then half of that, so fifty thousand who record. Then who of those eight actually have like a studio? Or even just four. an overdub room. Even overdub rooms. Probably at least one of those. <laughs> Maybe two. So we're talking 20,000 plus? 20,000, I'd say. 20,000 actual rooms. And th so I would say that means like 5,000 real serious rooms. Probably. Like real yeah. serious rooms. Oh, yeah. Y'all want to move to Nashville and, and be part of that craziness? Yeah. It's absurd. But like, I wonder how many commercial studios, like studios like Sound Emporium or like things like that, you know? Oh man, yeah, it's got to be. There's got to be a thousand pro commercial studios. Oh yeah, maybe like commercial just in the sense that they like, get rented out. Yes, yeah. People rent the rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, that is a wrap. Yeah, uh, we got a game plan. We're getting ready to do the EP. Yep. Thank you guys for putting up with me. Absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah it was tough. Yeah, I'm terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Looks like I barely missed it. It's just a little bit of a really great sunset. Oh well. Heading back home. Oh, okay. Here we are. If anyone from Pepsi is out there watching. I need a Pepsi sponsorship. Also, I need an endorsement for the, for something like this. I've been just crushing these dark chocolate coffee beans lately. It's becoming a real problem, I think. Mm -hmm. Only issue is they kind of get in your teeth. Sometimes looks like somebody just dumped a pepper shaker in your mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna go check my teeth. Okay, probably not the best idea to do that right before talking to y'all. Five tips to help you get endorsements. So for the better part of a decade, I was a working musician and an artist who played in bands, and um, I don't play out a lot much anymore. I do all this studio stuff now. However, endorsements have been kind of a common thread throughout my 18 years of doing this for the first half of it it was me beating my head against a wall like how could I get an endorsement <laughs> I just wanted like a string endorsement like just something to help you know take the burden off of the cost of like actually gigging so often I'm 3,500 gigs in for my career and I pretty much have I've only played a couple gigs a year for the last handful of years so the bulk of those gigs were in, in the first half of my career. And simultaneously while doing that, I also worked at a music store. Uh, shout out to Flores Music in Peoria, Illinois, where I'm from. 
so I worked there, and so I, I even had like some relationships with quite a few different reps for different companies. Um, and I just, for whatever reason, I just could not get my first endorsement for nothing. Fast forward a whole bunch of years uh, to today, I'm very fortunate to work with a whole bunch of companies, and I have companies hit me up constantly, on usually on Instagram, wanting to send me stuff, I get packages all the time. And a lot of it doesn't ever even show up like on my Instagram or Facebook or here on YouTube. And there's a reason for that. I'm absolutely adamant about only showing products that fit in my day-to-day -day workflow and products that I would be using whether I paid full price for or whether I was giving for free, given for free. I'm really adamant about that. I'm going to use what I want to use, and if I want to use something, then I will use it regardless of what it costs me. And so for that reason, I show all kinds of products on my social media and on YouTube here pretty equally, regardless of if I got it for free or not. So I want to try to break this down and give you guys five tips on things that will help you land endorsement deals. This will go the same for a basketball player trying to get a Nike endorsement as it does for a musician trying to get a guitar endorsement as it does for a producer trying to get a microphone endorsement. It's literally all the same stuff. Tip number one. Technically, that's two, right? Tip number one. I did it again. Tip number one. <laughs> build relationships with companies and with people that work at companies. All of my endorsements that I currently have and have had throughout the years now, um, they almost always started with some sort of a personal relationship. I was friends with someone in the company. Um, chances are I paid full price for a product uh, from a particular company and I loved the product so much I began to push it because like I said a minute ago, that's how I, how I operate on my socials. I loved the product so much I began to push it and tell people about it and show it off even though I paid full price for it. And that forged a relationship with people within the company and that built up some trust in me uh, as a producer, as an engineer, as a guitarist, whatever. Built up some trust, it forged a relationship between me and person from company and uh, turned into a working relationship that became an endorser, endorsee relationship. However, Having relationships on its own is not good enough. Because like I said, I used to work at a music store. I was, I'm personal friends with like the Paul Reed Smith rep. Like, still got his number in my phone. Uh, you know, Mesa Boogie reps, like string reps, and like on and on and on and on. So relationships are super, super important. But on their own, it's not all that matters. You have to have more than that. So tip number two. I did it right that time. What you want to look at is how do you provide value to whatever company that you want to work with? Or how do you provide value to any company? So there's a few ways that you can provide value to a company that will increase your chances of getting an endorsement deal with whoever it is that you want an endorsement deal with. Number one, if you're an artist or a musician and you're playing shows, um, the shows are going to be one of the ways that you provide value to these companies. How many people do you play in front of? How many nights a week do you play? If you're in front of 100 people a night per show, but you play one show a month, you're not able to get your product, their product, in front of very many people. If you play in front of 1,000 people a night and you play four nights a week, you know, 4,000 people a week is... Uh, that's a lot of people to put a product in front of. That's providing value to this company. You're putting their product in front of a whole bunch of different people. Same thing with your socials, whether it's like on Instagram or Facebook or here on YouTube or whatever. The more eyes that are on you, the more value you have to a company to help them push their product. Because that's, that's really what this is. This mindset of like, you guys are becoming a team and you are using your audience or what it is that you do, your talents, your audience or your talents or both, to help push their product. So your socials are a great way to do that. If you have a big social media following, um, it's 
it's a really great avenue for you to work with other companies and for you to help push them. And remember, for all you people buying Instagram followers, it's not even about the followers necessarily. It's about how many people see your content. It's about impressions. It's about likes. It's about comments. So that that is a huge, important factor in your worth to a company. The third way that you can help provide value to a company is, let's say for instance, I mean, not for instance, I am actually a producer, but I'm a producer. Let's say I'm working on the new Beyonce record. And this microphone company really would love to be able to say that Beyonce sang on their microphone. Used her, she used the microphone for her newest single. So they send me as a producer this microphone. I try it out. I like it. Beyonce sings on it. Now it's on Beyonce's record. Now this company has the ability to say that Beyonce used this microphone that they make and that they sell, she used that for her newest single. It's a massive amount of clout. It's a, it's a great rise in status for the company. It adds a lot of legitimacy that an A-list artist, who's usually working with an A-list producer, that they felt that this was a, a the right choice and a great tool to use. So you can take this however you want for whatever it is that you do and for whatever endorsements it is that you are trying to get. Um, doing big things and connecting you being the middleman or middlewoman that connects the dots from the company to another huge person in the industry that's a really important way that you can add value uh, to yourself that you can provide value to a company and help you get endorsements tip number three and the first half of half of tip number three i kind of already touched on but it's the size of your audience how many eyes are on you whether it's in the live venue at a show or on social media or on youtube or whatever how many eyes are on you but more importantly than that what's a, a thing to really consider is what percentage of your audience wherever that audience may be what percentage of your audience can be converted into customers for this company. Because at the end of the day, that's the reason why endorsements exist. It's so you as an endorsee can convert your audience into customers, potential customers for a company. Being conscious of what your audience would be interested in is a pretty important factor. For instance, I'm a producer, I use microphones and preamps, I'm a session guitarist, I use guitars and pedals and amps and... But you know, if a mattress company wanted to endorse me, I mean, I guess everyone sleeps on mattresses, uh, but that's not really what my audience pays attention to me for. My audience is not really interested in the kind of mattress I sleep on. Therefore, it's not a very good endorsement to go after. Sealy is probably not going to endorse me. However, this microphone company, this amplifier company, this pedal company, whatever, there's a lot better chance that they will endorse me because it's my niche. It's what people pay attention to me for. So pay attention to what your audience would be interested in. And it's a lot easier to get product endorsements if your audience could potentially be interested, if a big percentage of them could be interested in a particular product. Tip number four, be consistent. Uh, if you are playing shows and that is your audience, that's how you're promoting this product is because you're on the road and you're playing in front of a thousand people a night. Make sure that that stays as consistent as you can keep it. If you play one show that has 10,000 people in attendance, but it's six months before you play another show, it's really hard for companies to see the value in that because yes, you're in front of a serious amount of people, but only once in a while. So being consistent is really important. Um, and usually this comes before actually getting an endorsement because uh, companies, those relationships that you build with these companies, they're going to just be watching you. You know, they're going to see that you post on Instagram every single day and you post 10 stories on Instagram a day. Or they might also see that you only post on Instagram once a month. And so, you know, the frequency and consistency of making sure that what it is that you do stays consistent is really important in uh, forging a relationship and forging some trust with these companies that you may want an endorsement from. 
and it goes a long ways to prove you as a uh, you're a reliable person. They can rely on you to help promote their product. That's a really uh, big factor in it from my experience. Tip number tip number five. Work on building your own thing so you can position yourself as being valuable to these companies and let them offer to you, let them approach you. Whenever someone is approaching you to work with you, you have a lot more bargaining power than if you're beating on someone's door like, hey, give me some strings, I really want some strings. But when they're approaching you because of what it is that you do, because of the audience you're in front of, or because of your social media following, or whatever the case may be, when they approach you and want to work with you, it's it's a lot easier to get an endorsement than begging someone to give you something for free. Hope this helped. Uh, drop me a comment. Let me know what companies you want to be endorsed by or what companies you are endorsed by. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Please, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate all the support and give me a thumbs up if you like this. Don't hesitate to share with your friends if you got something out of it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.